Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and Apple released macOS Sequoia 15.1 beta one to developers. This particular update gives us our first look at Apple intelligence on Mac and was released alongside similar updates with iOS 18.1 beta one and iPad OS 18.1 beta one introducing Apple intelligence, as long as you have a supported device and on the Mac, what that means is basically you need a device with Apple Silicon. So you'll see M one and later for all of the different Macs listed and then the iPad is the same and iPhone is iPhone 15 pro and 15 pro max. So at first you'll need to be in the United States and have everything set to English. And it says it's coming in beta this fall still, but it's currently in beta now. Now this particular update came in at 1.75 gigabytes. Now I did update from the Mac OS Sequoia 15 betas. So it may be a little bit larger if you don't have any of those betas on your device. Now let's take a look at the build number and talk about what's new. And if we close out this window, you'll see here, Mac OS 15.1 and the build number is 24 B five zero zero nine I. So that just lets you know which version you're on. And this is a very early look at this particular beta. So I do expect it to be a little bit buggy. Now, as far as what's new, well, the main thing is Apple intelligence. If we go into system settings, you'll see, we have a new option here for Apple intelligence in Siri. At first, you'll actually have to enable this and join a wait list. Once that's actually completed, it will download a lot of the information in the background, about three and a half gigabytes. Then it will typically accept you into Apple intelligence in Siri. Now it actually shows you that here when it says it's ready. So I have some screenshots of that after it completed, you'll see it says Apple intelligence is here time to experience the new personal intelligence system. After that, it came up on the screen with this screen where it just talks about new ways to express yourself, the start of a new era for Siri and built for privacy. It also talks about using Siri itself. So Siri here, it says it is an intelligent assistant. Now this is not Siri 2.0, so it's not exactly the same. And then also we have type to Siri as well and speak to Siri. So you have both of those options if you want to use those. And in settings, you can see this, you can have it listen for the keyword here with Siri or Siri with the word, Hey, in front of it. And then also we have keyboard shortcuts for type to Siri. We can either press command twice. We can press globe S left command twice, right command twice, or whatever you'd like. So you can customize that. So if we press command twice, it brings up Siri. And then we can say, what is the weather tomorrow? Give it a second. It pops up, shows you the weather. So it's pretty simple and straightforward. However, it is not the intelligent Siri 2.0 that we've been waiting for just yet. So we have the new look for it. We also have a new sound for it. And just like on the iPhone, when we say, Hey Siri, we get a new sound for it this time. So we can go ahead and talk to Siri. It will take our information in. And again, here's the sound again. So that's what it sounds like. So that gives you an idea and it's just been updated a little bit. We don't get that little splash across the screen when it's activated. Basically we just have the option here to talk to Siri in the upper right, as you can see. So pretty simple and straightforward, but that's what we have for Siri. The next thing we have is writing tools. Now this is available in a couple different places. One of them is messages. One of them is notes. If we go into notes, if you're in a note or maybe some piece of text throughout the OS, all you need to do is highlight that text. And then you'll see the Apple intelligence button here. We now have the option to proofread, rewrite, switch it to a friendly sort of message, also professional concise, or we could summarize it or go to key points, list or table. So we'll click proofread and you'll see that it actually found some issues here. So it's suggesting some changes. It underlines them sort of in a rotating gradient underline. And then we can go through and see what it has. It says phrase usage and it gives us information with context as to what it's changed. We can revert it back, give it a thumbs up or thumbs down. And then we have this option here again to revert back. Additionally, if I highlight them again, we can option click or right click and you'll have similar options here. So you have your writing tools down here. Sometimes the Apple intelligence icon shows up. Sometimes it doesn't, but again, show writing tools. So there we go. And we could have it switch to maybe a more friendly sort of message. So it rewrote it there. And now it says, here's a new note about the latest Apple intelligence with Siri 2.0 and the writing tools it includes. So we could do that again. We can revert back. If we go back into our writing tools, let's see if it can summarize as well. So we'll click summarize, see what it does here. 
and it says Apple's latest intelligence features, including Siri 2.0 and writing tools, are only available on Apple Silicon devices and iPhone 15 Pro and Pro Max and iPad M1 and newer models. So it actually did a pretty good job there. Then we can rate it and give some feedback. It gathers some information if you want to do that. And sometimes it doesn't work properly either with the feedback tool. Additionally, one other thing, we'll go back into our writing tools here. We'll show them again and let's see if it can make some key points for us. So we'll see, maybe make a list. Maybe it's too short for that, but we'll switch it to maybe professional. Let's try it again. It's not really working again. It is early on, but let's see if it can create key points. There we go. It made bullet points about what we were actually talking about. So that's pretty great. Again, this is available everywhere. So if we go into messages, it also gives us suggestions based on context. Things I'm asking in the message, will it work on 15 Pro Max? It says it should work on all models, which is inaccurate. I showed this in the iOS 18.1 beta one video, or yes, it will. Then you can reply with its suggestions. Again, if I want to maybe type in here, right click or option click, we have the same writing tools here that we have in notes. So maybe we want to write something long to one of our friends, or maybe we just want to be more concise. We can do that. So it's not going to change this a whole lot, but I think you get the idea there. They've also updated the emoji keyboard to go along with this. With the new emoji keyboard, they've updated it just like they have on iOS, where it's sort of the larger options with the emoji. So in some cases you'll have stickers, other times you won't, but it has the larger icons where they had that in beta three. They've brought that back with this particular beta. Whether or not it's in the next beta, we don't really know. If we go into mail, let's close out of this. And within mail, maybe we have the latest power on newsletter by Mark Gurman. We have the option to summarize now in the upper right, click on summarize. It will then summarize all of the information in the newsletter where it says Apple is planning a significant update for the Apple watch to commemorate its 10th anniversary. So you'll see all of the information here just summarized and it's available throughout mail. The same writing tools are available as well. If we go in and create email and this is a new message about Apple intelligence, you'll see that we have the same writing tools. If we highlight this and then option click our writing tools are here as well. So you have them all throughout the OS. It's just built in everywhere. If we go into Safari and then we go into reader mode, We'll go into show reader. We now have the new summarize option within reader itself. So that's part of Apple intelligence. It just read the article and then summarized it over here, talking about iPhone 16 pro models that are expected to support Wi-Fi seven. So this is super helpful. It didn't work in the actual reader view before. If we close out of this and go back into our settings, and if we go to our focus modes here, we have a new focus mode to reduce interruptions that uses Apple intelligence. You can see it here where it says when reduce interruptions is active, intelligently allow important notifications to interrupt you and silence notifications determined not to be important. Any notifications specifically allowed or silenced will be allowed or silenced. So you have that option. And once this is enabled on other devices, you'll see it on devices that aren't supported, but they won't use Apple. Apple intelligence for it. Now, movie memories don't seem to be in photos yet, at least on the Mac, but they are on iOS 18.1. And also the code actually sort of leaked the next iPhones, iPhone 16 and 17 models as found by Aaron P 613, along with upcoming iPads and upcoming Macs as well. So they're all apparently here coming in the future. And that was found in the code and with Apple intelligence, while we currently have the writing tools, we don't yet have the image creation tools, where maybe you could turn a sketch into a better image based on what you want or have gen moji as well those things are not yet here and hopefully they'll be in a future update so also we're not seeing chat gpt just yet if it is i haven't seen it so i'm looking forward to trying those parts out and so as far as the release notes go, this is a little bit different here within the public facing release notes. You'll see that it says, see the Mac OS Sequoia 15 beta four release notes for additional details about new features, resolved issues, known issues and deprecations. So basically this is the same as beta four with Apple intelligence enabled. Also, you'll see resolved issues here for system integrity protection. Other than that, it's basically the same as Mac OS 15 beta four. So not a whole lot of changes just yet with this. 
device. If you're wondering if you should install macOS 15.1 beta one on your device, I definitely would not do that just yet unless you had a secondary device to try it out on, or it wasn't a main production machine. It seems to be fine so far, but you just never know what's going to happen. And I haven't used final cut yet on it or edited a video because I wanted to make sure everything was working properly. So it's great that we can try out Apple intelligence, but I wouldn't try it out just yet. It could have an impact on your battery life. Of course, if that's critical to you and this particular device, I haven't checked in a while. We're still at hundred percent battery health, but in general, it's doing quite well. No issues here with my MacBook air. I use this all the time for notes and more. And so that's about it in this particular update. Performance seems to be about the same. Everything else is similar, but we have those Apple intelligence updates. Let me know what you think of Apple intelligence in the comments below, and I'll link an iPhone version of this wallpaper in the description. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like as always. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time. Thank you.